Hi everyone, I'm Marcy, and today I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious homemade mole sauce. This is a recipe that was requested by one of my viewers a long time ago, but the reason I waited so long to share it is because up until recently, I had only ever made mole from a jar. You know my friend, Doña Maria. Well, today she's stepping aside because I've worked really hard on this recipe, and I think you're really going to love it. First, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, and let's get cooking. Mole is one of the most delicious sauces in Mexican cuisine because it's got multiple layers of flavor, from spicy to sweet and everything in between. And you only get that complex flavor from a lot of ingredients. So I'll go ahead and put them in the description box below, but here we go. We start with six dried ancho chiles, and uh, hopefully you'll get some that are fresh enough so that they're uh, somewhat pliable. And this is a very mild chili, so you don't have to worry about this being too hot. You'll need two tomatillos, one garlic clove, two dried corn tortillas, and one slice of bread. Now this is going to thicken our sauce. Some people also use crackers. Some people even use animal crackers. So really you just need something, uh, some form of bread that's dry. You'll need one tablet of Mexican chocolate, and this is a bittersweet chocolate, so it's not gonna be overly sweet. You'll also need one fourth cup raw almonds, one fourth cup pumpkin seeds, one tablespoon sesame seeds, plus a little more for garnish. You'll need one star anise, one fourth of a teaspoon cloves, two tablespoons peanut butter, some salt to taste. This is probably about a tablespoon. You'll need four cups of chicken broth. Now we're having our mole with chicken. So I went ahead and cooked some chicken in the crock pot this morning and I still got it in there staying warm, but I took the broth from there. You'll also need some lard or cooking oil with a high heat point. So I'm using canola oil. And finally, if you like your mole on the sweeter side, this is optional, but you can add one tablespoon of piloncillo. And this is just pure cane sugar. And uh, you can just take a knife and scrape it off and uh, use about a tablespoon and it'll give it just a little bit of sweetness. And that's basically it. So let's go ahead and get started. First order of business is removing the stems and seeds from our ancho chili pods. It takes just a little while to clean them out, particularly when the chili is fresher because the seeds tend to stick to the pods. So be patient and when they're all clean, set them aside. Next, we're going to heat up a large skillet with about three tablespoons of oil in it so we can brown our chili pods. I'm so bad about wearing aprons, but today since I'm wearing white and mole is a dark sauce, it's a must. All right, this is nice and hot. Go ahead and drop the chilies in. We're going to quickly toast the chili on both sides. This should only take a couple of minutes. Then you can remove the pods and set them aside in a large dish. Now we'll add the tomatillos and the garlic to the chili-infused oil and get them roasted. The garlic doesn't take long at all, but the tomatillos take a little longer to get those char marks. It's a good thing I wore my apron. When they look like this, you can take them out and just put them in the same bowl. Then we'll put in almost everything else, the pumpkin seeds, almonds, sesame seeds, the tortillas and bread. I'll break these up as I put them in there. I'll toss in the star anise, the cloves, the piloncillo, and the salt going to let all this cook in the same oil for a while. This is just building flavor. All right, the sesame seeds are starting to pop and I can really smell the star anise and the cloves. So I'm gonna put the rest of these things back in. And I'll add the peanut butter. I know it seems like it's a really weird combination, but it works. It just works. All right, so let's put in the chicken broth. And we're just going to let this all cook down for about 10 minutes as we stir.
Next, we'll take the pan off the stove and carefully transfer all that's in it into a blender. Depending on the size of your blender, you may be able to do it all at once, or you may have to do it in increments. I already know it's a tight fit for my blender, so I get most of the big pieces in there, along with some liquid, and blend that first. Then I add in the rest and continue to blend until smooth. Meantime, I clean the pan that was used earlier. I place it back on the stove at medium heat and add a little more oil into it. Then take the mole sauce and transfer it from the blender back into the pan and let it cook on low for about 15 minutes. I think I need to lower the heat just a little bit. Doesn't that look good? While it's simmering, you can break up the chocolate by using a serrated knife. Just shave it into pieces that will melt easier. This is looking really good. We just need one final ingredient, and that's the Mexican chocolate. Now, here's what I recommend. Start by putting maybe half of a tablet first and then give it a taste and decide if you want the whole thing. I already know I really love the taste of the chocolate in my mole, so I'm using the entire tablet. I'm just gonna put it in there, stir and let it melt. And here's the thing too, the longer that you let it simmer, the sauce is just gonna get thicker and thicker. So if you really like a thick mole sauce, just let it simmer a little longer. And if you don't like it thick, maybe you think something like this is too thick, then just add a little more chicken broth. I like mine just like this though. I can actually smell the chocolate that I just added. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. I don't know about you, but this is making me hungry. I'm gonna be ready to eat. And so is my dog Miley, but she won't be getting any of this. I always joke that she likes Mexican food. <laughs> this is done. I'll go ahead and get my plate ready. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some of this chicken, get a couple of pieces. And I'll pour this mole sauce on top. How good does that look? sprinkle some sesame seeds on top and I'm ready to eat. First, let me just take off this apron. And by the way, um, chicken mole is very popular, but you can have mole any number of ways. You can pour it over a carne asada burrito or make enchiladas with it. It's super versatile. Let's go ahead and give this a try. And I'll get plenty of sauce on there. That looks good. Mm. Oh, that's good. I need some more. It's a perfect blend of sweet and spicy and nuttiness. It's just really delicious. And making it homemade, there's always a payoff. So I really hope you try this. And having said that, Next week, I'm gonna show you how to make mole from a jar. So for those of you who wanna cut corners or maybe you just have really busy lives and making it from a jar is gonna be so much easier, I'll show you next week. But hopefully you'll try this and let me know if you do. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also follow me at Marcy Inspired on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time, blessings from my kitchen to yours.